So hello, everybody. I'm Peter Larson. I'm with the Ottawa Forum on Israel-Palestine. And I'm very, very lucky to be able to talk to Jafar Fara, who is the founder and director general of Mosawa. So Jafar, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with me this afternoon. Thank you, Peter. Thanks uh, for, for this opportunity, of course. Um, Jafar, just before I get into asking you about, Bar about uh, Masawa and about current events in Israel, tell me a bit about yourself. Is, is your family, you are a Palestinian citizen of Israel. Um, your family has been living in Palestine or what's now Israel for a number of years. How long does your family go back as far as you know? Come on, you know, <laughs> it's a question that usually you ask uh, Jewish citizens of the state of Israel. <laughs> we have been here for generations. Actually, my father's side is from Haifa uh, since 1917, and my uh, mother's side is from Eilabun. It's a village uh, in the north that have been, uh, um, you know, they, they, they have been uh, thrown to Lebanon in 48, and they came back later on. It's called a uh, small village. It's called Eilabun. And uh, we live uh, in Haifa, me and my wife and three. Uh, we have three kids that we are living in Haifa. All of my life, I, I, I have been in Haifa, except nine years that I have been also in Nazareth uh, for uh, school and, and, uh, and education. And um, Jeffrey, you founded Masawa, you're the founder of it. Um, how long ago and why did you do that? Actually, I have been uh, active since uh, school. I was the head of the Arab Students Union in the universities. And uh, later on, I was a journalist for uh, local newspapers of uh, Haaretz and Arabic, uh, different Arabic press. In 1997, uh, 98, I quit journalism and I established uh, Musawa with a group of friends and people that uh, we thought that it's important to advocate for the rights, uh, social, economic, and political rights of the Palestinian uh, Arab community. We started in uh, 99, actually, officially. And in a certain point, I took off also. I left Musawa for almost uh, three years to establish the first uh, Arab TV station, uh, Hala TV. And later on, uh, also, I was involved in establishing also the Musawa TV. It's two TV stations that uh, bring the voice of the Palestinian Arab community inside Israel. I came back to Musawa uh, in 2015 to also uh, go on with uh, our advocacy uh, strategies locally and internationally. And I'm happy that also our voice have been heard uh, here in Europe and also in the US. Today we have also friends of Musawa in the US that my colleague is, around, is in charge of uh, Soha Salman uh, Musa. She's, uh, in New York, and we try to bring our voice to decision makers in Brussels and also in uh, New York and DC. Uh, this is an organization that try to advocate locally. Uh, we do uh, parliamentary advocacy, we do media campaigns, uh, community organizing, international advocacy. Uh, we prepare uh, legislation. We use some litigation also, but uh, we we do. A lot of economic development. We are actually the only Arab organization that monitors the state budget and the allocation of the state budget to, uh, from uh, different ministries to the Arab community. Well, maybe at some future time we'll get back to we'll explore this whole issue about the educational system in Israel, which we understand to be separate based on religion, and um, that has some consequences for its non-religious. Uh, non-Jewish members of citizens of Israel. But um, this interview was taking place in the middle of June, about a month after uh, major uh, hostilities between the state of Israel and uh, Hamas. And those were as a result of a number of things that happened, particularly in Jerusalem, uh, uh, expulsions in Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, then the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and so on and so forth. Um, once Israel and Hamas started exchanging rocket fire, uh, my understanding is that there were um, demonstrations all across um, uh, Palestinian society inside of Israel, in the West Bank, uh, and so on, and that um, uh, Israel uh, reacted to this quite strongly. Is that, could you fill us in a little bit about the reaction amongst uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel 
and then the Israeli reaction to that reaction? Uh, you know, uh, actually, it's uh, uh, all this crisis have been initiated by Netanyahu's government uh, with his ministers, uh, the extreme right wing uh, uh, initiated this whole crisis to prevent uh, 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 to prevent transformation of uh, of, of uh, government. Uh, Netanyahu, uh, you know, similar to Trump, actually in the U.S. He was looking for ways to, to, to prevent uh, power transfer and and uh, to prevent. Uh, he lost actually the election, and in between uh, this transition, he created the crisis. Uh, in the beginning, uh, in Sheikh Jarrah, uh, in Jerusalem, and the evacuation of the Palestinian families from their houses in the Palestinian neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. Later on, uh, they have been. Uh, Oh, you're, you're gone mute there, Jafar. Uh, there you go. Sorry, sorry. It's okay to, uh, the, in, in several occasions, uh, the police attacked uh, 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 different uh, religious uh, uh, events. It started actually not with Al-Aqsa. It started actually with the Greek Orthodox uh, Eastern March. Uh, it had been attacked and prevented from... Uh, uh, moving in East Jerusalem, in the old city. And later on, uh, also uh, attacks have been taking place against the uh, people in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And um, yeah, for, for, for a while, for almost a week, there was very strong civil resistance. Actually, Palestinians from all over the Green Line, inside the Green Line, uh, have been motivated to go and pray and practice their uh, freedom of religion in uh, in. Uh, in Jerusalem, Christians and Muslims, but throughout of Ramadan, uh, people uh, start to just to take buses and cars and to go to Al-Aqsa. And the Israeli authorities, the police took a decision to block all the ways to Jerusalem. That was uh, Saturday and it was holiday for many uh, people in the Muslim community and they blocked the ways. So people went out from buses and they start to walk to, 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 to the east part of Jerusalem. So, Jeff, I let me interrupt you just for a second to clarify for my Canadian audience. For a long time, Palestinians living in the West Bank have been prevented or very much limited in their uh, ability to go to the Alexa Mosque. But a Palestinian citizen of Israel, as citizens of Israel, have had the freedom to go there uh, to Jerusalem when they want. And you're saying that this time the Israelis blocked off the roads to prevent them from doing so. Is that correct? Yeah, it was it was it was Saturday, and the Israelis blocked all the ways that uh, come from inside Israel, not from the West Bank, from inside Israel, from the inside the Green Line, from Tel Aviv and Yaffa and uh, and the Nakab and in in, in 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 the south and the north. They just block all the streets. It was crazy. So uh, thousands of people uh, just uh, went out from buses and cars and start to walk toward uh, the holy places in. Uh, Al-Aqsa and the holy places in Jerusalem. Um, this uh, was very powerful scene. Now, uh, uh, Netanyahu was looking for ways to escalate. So Sunday, uh, the day after, and, and the two days after, uh, Netanyahu's police, and, and uh, uh, they start to attack demonstrations, peaceful demonstrations that took, places, uh, took place in, in, in several places, like we are living in Haifa, and, and usually uh, uh, in Haifa, you don't see this amount of uh, uh, police officers all around the area, and they block, you know, here in the German colony area where, where the, you know, 500 people were standing and demonstrating against uh, 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 the restrictions and the evacuation of Sheikh Jarrah. So the police attacked people and, and, and uh, uh, arrested in the same evening 25 people and, and, uh, physically uh, attacked them and people, uh, nine people in that night needed uh, medical treatment. The reaction was day after that more and more demonstrations took place all over the Palestinian Arab community. Uh, in certain point, uh, we start to see gangs uh, coming from the settlers, from the occupied territories to attack the Arab community in the mixed cities. This is not the first time that actually the mixed cities have been targeted 
since 2005, since the evacuation of the uh, Gaza Strip uh, by the Israeli government, the settlers uh, took a decision to target the mixed cities. In 2008, there was big clashes in Akka city. This time, it was Lud near the airport, Ramli, Yafa in Tel Aviv, Haifa, Akka, uh, uh, all mixed cities actually, whereas there is a little bit more uh, sensitivities, but also there is a daily uh, uh, connection between Jews and Arabs have been targeted by the settlers. Uh, uh, mosques have been attacks, attacked, uh, uh, and, and especially in Lud, it was very uh, tough uh, clashes. And most of these people are uh, settlers from the occupied territories that have been brought to, uh, in organized way, ways by the settlers' organizations like Lehava and Familia. This is like these are very extreme terrorist organizations that uh, uh, brought buses of settlers from the occupied territories to attack the Arab citizens in the mixed cities. Yeah. We saw it in Haifa in that evening. Uh, uh, you know, in the same, uh, in, in, in just it took uh, a few days, and it was for almost two weeks that Hamas called the Israeli government to stop the escalation against the Palestinians in East Jerusalem and also against the Palestinians inside Israel. So it wasn't, uh, the Hamas reaction wasn't a surprise for anybody. Everybody expected that in sooner or later, Hamas will try to intervene and will try to react to the, uh, to the, to the uh, uh, violation of a human rights uh, in, inside uh, East Jerusalem, inside the Green Line, and etc. And actually, I, I think that, that this is exactly what Netanyahu was looking for. He was looking for regional uh, crisis and, and regional war. Uh, he did his best to create crisis with Iran in the beginning, and then he created this uh, crisis with Hamas, with East Jerusalem, and with the Palestinian Arab community. Now, in the same week, in the end of the same week, I met, we met also with the American special envoy, Hadi Amer, and people, and we raised, we, we hold the international community responsible to uh, Netanyahu's uh, 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 initiative to create this, to do the incitement and, and, and the use of police and the use of the gangs, the racist gangs, to attack Arab, the Arab community. So, in certain point, uh, they start also uh, uh, to call for ceasefire. They end the war with Gaza, but they kept targeting the Arab community uh, uh, inside Israel. And why, in total, why, why once, the, once the shooting had stopped, why, what's their objective in targeting the Arab community inside Palestinian society with inside Israel? Uh, you know, the, the, what they were looking for is actually a picture of victory. Mm -hmm. They didn't have this picture of victory from Gaza Strip with Hamas. In certain point, uh, 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 there was a ceasefire as a result uh, of, of, of uh, also uh, 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 Arab and international intervention to stop the war or with Gaza and stop the war uh, uh, between Hamas and Israel. But actually, nobody uh, was looking after what's happening with the Arab community inside Israel. We have been left alone, actually. And uh, uh, what Netanyahu and his minister, Ohana, the minister of police and internal security, when they were looking for the picture of victory. So they went on and they declared that they will have, you know, this whole law and order uh, operation. And uh, in the end, uh, the target was to arrest another 500 uh, civilians. In total, uh, 2,200, imagine we are small minority, 20% of the population in Israel, in one month, uh, the Israeli police arrested 2,200 uh, Arab citizens in one month. Now, and, Jennifer, what uh, they, these people who were arrested, were they all arrested while they were in the act of throwing stones or shooting at Israeli police or what? You know, I was, I was taking to invest for investigation. You know, they came to my house, they have my mobile. I was arrested in 2018. My leg was blocking uh, as a result of a police attack inside the police station. There is legal procedures against the police officer now since 2018 uh, following his attack. They know me. Everybody know me. They took a decision to come to my house 
to terrify my daughter. She was studying uh, at home, and instead of just uh, you know calling uh, us uh, and saying, you know, you need, uh, you uh, we need, we want you for uh, to come to for investigation, and you know they have my mobile. My mobile is published everywhere. We had in the same day press conference of the high follow up committee for Arab citizen. In the middle of the press conference, they uh, came to my house to take me for investigation. I was investigated for three hours. It was much more, you know, like to tell me, you know, uh, slow, you know, be careful. We are watching you and etc. They arrested my son week before by the Secret Service. The same. They came to my house. My daughter was at home. You know, we are looking for uh, Basil. I, I, you know, we just uh, told, told them we will bring Basil to the police station. We took my son to the police station. He was banned uh, to meet a lawyer. Uh, uh, they took him to the Secret Service. They moved him from one uh, Secret Service uh, uh, center to another one. Oh, in how Canada, old is he? Far, far away. How He's, old is he? A, a, he? He just graduated from university. He studied law, he studied uh, political science and, and media, and he just graduated from university. And uh, they investigated him for 48 hours in one of the terrible places. It's it's like uh, really the Secret Service is not even police station. It's like really the Shabak investigation centers is really terrible places on charges of burning police car. In the end, they just put him out of the police station and they released him without any charges. So that it was false accusations. So the, the message is that we will harass human rights defenders like me and, and other people. There is uh, mayors and activists that have been arrested just to uh, threaten them by the Secret Service. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's uh, weird uh, that Israel is still called the only democracy in the Middle East because what we saw all over this month was actually dictatorship in practice. And it's not a Jewish dictatorship. It's Netanyahu's dictatorship. It was, you know, nobody really questioned his uh, orders. It's like, uh, imagine that the prime minister or the minister of internal police in Canada will uh, invite the press for press conference and he will say, now we will have an operation and we will arrest 500 people and then the police will go and find 500 people to arrest them because the minister goal was now you the police without any legal base go and arrest 500 people this was the situation that the minister uh, uh, declared the target and then the police was making lists of people activists, even people that haven't been participating in demonstrations, they created a list and they start to take people for investigation just to make a, a V. Yes, we have like the 500. In total, this is, uh, you know, we have tens of people that have been uh, fired from their jobs, harassed on uh, social media. Uh, people we just yesterday uh, submitted uh, legal procedures. We started legal procedures against Israeli company called Victory, that in one day they just fired this, you know, they sent six students from their branch in Tiberia. They just fired all of them. They sent them home in one day. We we, we started yesterday, we submitted a legal procedure against this uh, company for compensation of these workers. All of them actually are students that in parallel to their university study, they try to work in, 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 a, in a mall and they have been fired from their job. Uh, we have at least 10 people that lost their eyes as a result of police violence and use of uh, uh, gummy rubber uh, uh, during these demonstrations. Uh, so in this sense, the massive use of violence, of violence that have been practiced. We have uh, two people that have been killed, one by police and one by Jewish gangs. So uh, we suffered all this month from parallel, police violence and also gangs, racist gangs that attack civilians in checkpoints or in, 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 in their way to work and etc. cetera. Jaffa, uh, we, uh, we're getting near our time here, so I'm just gonna ask you a last clarifying question. We, we have some experience in Canada with a, a, um, a bill that's called the War Measures Act that um, allows the government to suspend normal habeas corpus, normal 
human rights uh, provisions and so on. My question is about Israel. All these things that they did, the arrests of people who were, based on what you say, manifestly not involved directly or even indirectly in organizing riots or doing other things, um, and then be held for 48 hours. Is this all permitted by Israeli law or are the police acting um, in a way that's tolerated but actually not accepted by Israeli law? Can you help us on that point, please? Yeah, you know, you have to remember that Israel hold uh, almost 2 million Palestinians in the West Bank uh, under military regime and occupation, actually. East Jerusalem have annexed uh, also in, uh, by the Israeli uh, uh, annexation law that have been uh, uh, approved only by Israel. Uh, East Jerusalem is not uh, accept, is not. Uh, 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 nobody actually accept this annexation internationally. Uh, in Israel, since '48, actually, the, mili the, the military uh, 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 and the emergency laws in Israel still in practice. They renew the emergency laws every year. You know, in the last uh, year, uh, inside Israel, I, I don't talk about the West Bank, which are under the military occupation. I say, you know, like. Most people think that it's separated. The West Bank, there is military occupation uh, and military orders. And here, there is uh, democratic uh, laws. But here in Israel today, we have 13 Arab citizens that have been arrested uh, by uh, administrative uh, orders without uh, legal procedures. You can appeal to the uh, courts, but then the judge will see only the Secret Service material so administrative uh, arrest still used in Israel, instead of having, you know, public uh, legal procedures, the Secret Service can go to the uh, Minister of uh, Internal uh, Security or the Minister of Defense and can get uh, administrative order to arrest people for six or for one year, for almost one year, people have been arrested. So in this sense, it's very complicated uh, legal system but in Israel, we have emergency laws that have been used also in this crisis. So when your son, for example, gets picked up, or as you, you went to the police station with him, um, he was held for 48 hours. That's legal. They're able to do that without a lawyer. Uh, they can question him. He doesn't have a right to a lawyer. That's legal? Yeah, they, uh, they, uh, they came with uh, order to ban him from meeting a lawyer. Hmm. We appealed to the court, district court in Haifa, against banning the banning him meeting a lawyer. The judge approved the Secret Service decision to prevent my son to meet a lawyer, and uh, it was clear that it's the Secret Service who is implementing this this uh, this, uh, this investigation. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't see my son in the in the court. The lawyer couldn't see my son in the court. The, the judge approved, two judges actually, approved uh, the ban order that have been released by the Secret Service. And after 48 hours, they just released him without any charges because their, you know, the message was clear. It's a message to us as a human rights defenders that we will arrest your, or your sons and we will ban them meeting a lawyer. We will uh, even uh, release... Uh, ban to uh, publish anything about the arrest of your son. We will take him to one uh, investigation center and we will move him uh, to another one without telling you. So my my wife went to to get some uh, uh, some uh, medical uh, uh, some medicine to him to the jail in Haifa to the um, uh, investigation center and they just told her we don't know where is your son. Imagine they just took him to another investigation in Petah Tikva, which is like 100 kilometers far away from Haifa. They just move him, moved him in the night without telling the lawyers, so he just disappeared. So imagine that uh, his mother uh, and father is coming to the uh, uh, police station or to the investigation uh, center or to the jail, and suddenly you disappear, that your son is not there, he just disappeared uh, overnight. This is the situation that we, you know, we talk in our case about 48 hours, 
there is a people that are in jails for two weeks without possibility to meet a lawyer. Right. Jafar, um, it sounds like a very difficult situation. Um, you and Masawa have uh, your work cut out for you. Uh, I think um, a lot of Canadians uh, are confused when they hear that Israel is a democratic and Jewish state. They know that it has a parliament and other judges and so on, but you've sort of raised the, um, let us look a little bit under the cover and um, see how it works for you as a human rights uh, activist, Palestinian citizen of Israel. So Jaffer Farah, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us today and perhaps we'll have occasion again in the future to uh, come back to you for some more information. Thank you for this opportunity, really. I, we appreciate this opportunity. And I do uh, call everybody that watch this uh, program broadcast to go to our Facebook, uh, to our uh, page, uh, Musawa Center, and, uh, and, and follow up uh, our updates on also our website. Thanks uh, uh, for this opportunity again, Peter. I will include a link uh, to Musawa in, the, uh, in my blog post.